Hey everyone, we are back with our second video in the Learning Destiny series. If you haven't seen the first one, you can check that out in our entire series presentation on our website. Way easier to digest over there with blog content and exclusive stuff. So if you want to get into Learning Destiny and see it in its full form, head over to our website and check that out. Links to that are in the description of this video. Uh, so Zach, this is where we're going to actually play our first game of Star Wars Destiny using the two-player game that we decided was the best way to Right enter. out of the box. So the two-player game is what we're using. This is only cards from the two-player game. We don't have any card sleeves. We don't have anything extra. It's just all the tokens, dice, and cards from the two-player game. Now, before we get into it, there's a couple of things we need to note. First, when we're starting a game of Destiny, we bring our characters and we bring a battlefield that we have chosen to potentially play on during the game. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you might construct a team of characters? Absolutely. So you'll notice in the bottom left of every character, there is a point cost. And there's either one or two numbers. If there's one number, that's the cost of the character to bring them to the game. If there's two, that is the cost to bring that character with an additional die. So you'll notice I have Captain Phasma and Kylo Ren here. They each have one die. And on their point card below, you'll see for Phasma, 9 and 13. So to bring Captain Phasma to the game with a single die costs me nine points. If I want to run her as elite, which is the, what is it called, bringing two dice, uh, it would cost me 13 points. Teams are constructed using 30 points, so you can spend anywhere from zero to 30 points to build your team, and that's how you construct a team. Now you'll notice that both characters in the two-player game, both of our sides, work out pretty perfectly if they're both elite. So elite uh, Ray here is worth 15 points, so that would be two dice. And then two dice elite Poe would be 15 points. That's 30 points. That's yep. my max. And on your side, 17 for Kylo and 13 for Phasma. So we could start the game with two dice on both of these characters, basically making them both elite. And then we would both be at 30 points. So a cool way to go after you've played a couple of two-player game matches, buy another two-player game. That's right. And then you have a full team that you can start playing with. You can customize your deck a little bit. Now, along with our battlefield and our characters, we actually both bring a deck to the game. And so in the two-player starter, these aren't quite full decks. So 30 cards is the normal. You have to have exactly 30 cards in your deck. Um, and again, if you buy two two-player starters, you could run elite characters and you know add the cards to get to the point where you have 30 total. But and this is a great little way to start. So this is what, like 23-ish cards in these I, decks? I think it's about 23 cards, point? yeah. So we're going to shuffle these up, randomize them, uh, and most most people when they play a card game, especially a collectible one, are going to want to get card sleeves, and we're going to cover all of that in a later video. So for yep. now, just focus on playing. Just so the first thing that you do in Star Wars Destiny is you're going to get your characters out, you're going to set your battlefield aside, you're going to shuffle up your deck, and then both players are actually going to draw five cards from the top of their deck. All right, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Five cards. Okay. I'm not even going to bother with a mulligan, and, and let's talk about that. So there's a, a mulligan rule in the game, which is you can take any number of the cards from your initial five hands, uh, and I'll do that just to show you. Five hands? Five cards in your hand, your initial hand. Uh, so I'm going to take one card I don't want, and I'm going to put it back in my deck, and I'm going to shuffle again. And then I get to draw back up to five cards. So this is a way to make sure that there's just a little bit of consistency to what you're seeing. It's a 30-card deck. You draw five. You get to shuffle any back in and draw again. Um, and that way you, again, you get to start with the characters that you want, but that also helps you see the cards from your deck that you want to see. I'm going to keep all of these, so I'm not going to take a mulligan at all. That's what we call a good hand. I, I think so. I think it would be interesting to, to learn from. All right, so once you have your initial hand, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take all the dice on your starting characters and you're going to roll them into the game. And you're going to total up the num numerical values on all of your dice here. So I got two. I got three. And so important to note, a blank obviously is worth zero. But a special symbol, anytime you need to reference a special symbol in terms of a number, it is always a zero. Yep. So if I were to roll this on my opening roll, that would be a one total. Which but I got three. Good. So Steven wins the roll, and what this does is we each brought a battlefield to the game, and he's going to get to choose where this fight is happening. So does he want it to happen on my hangar bay or at Obi-Wan's hut? And let me tell you something special about this decision. If I choose my battlefield, which is all great and good, I'll get to go first and we'll get to play on my battlefield, which could be a huge advantage for me if my battlefield is really important to my strategy. But if I decide as the winner to choose Zach's battlefield, he will go first, but here's the thing, I will get two shields to put on my characters at the start of the game. 
So it's basically like I start to health ahead of whatever I was going to be. And the inverse is true. So if you choose your battlefield, I will get the shield. So whoever's going second gets two free shields. And let's look. You have a reveal the top card of an opponent's deck. If that card is an inventor support, deal one damage. Okay, that seems universally okay. Hmm. And then give a blue character one shield or spend a reach to give a non-blue character one shield. I will go ahead and let's say we'll we'll play on Hangar Bay. Okay. I'll I'll come meet you at Hangar Bay. That's right. So your battlefield leaves play and you get to put two shields attributed among your characters however you wish. So I could do, for instance, two shields on Poe. I could do one on Poe, one on Ray. I could do two shields on Ray. Fascinating questions at the start of this game, always. Uh, like if I put two shields on Ray, maybe because it's a really important character for me, that leaves Poe a little more exposed. If I do one and one, I kind of split the goalposts a little bit and get to see where Zach's going to decide to do damage. And of course, I could do two on Poe and leave Ray a little bit exposed. So I'm, I'm just going to do one and one. Okay. Make it as easy as possible. And so then we each get two resources to start the game. All right. And the crazy thing is, the game starts. We're here. <laughs> right, right here. We've done it. You dive straight into the action. So as we covered in the previous video, um, it's actions back and forth. So I get the first action and I can choose from... From all the available actions, and we're gonna dive right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do yeah. uh, is I'm gonna play a card from my hand. So it's called Cross Guard Lightsaber. You'll see the resource cost in the corner. I'm gonna pay two resources, and it enters play onto Kylo. And it also has a text that says, after you play this upgrade on Kylo Ren, I deal one damage to a character. What? So, so what? <laughs> so I'm going to choose. That's why it's Cross Guard. Uh, huh? To do one damage to Poe. <laughs> all right. One damage to Poe, so shield is gone. It will soak up any damage that comes in, and then anything over the shields would go on to Poe. So if Zach just did two damage, I would remove one shield and take one damage, uh, unlike some other shields that are going to block everything in various games. Uh, all right, so that's that. Now, some of the decision-making processes here are actually fascinating. For me, whenever I'm looking at the board and what I might want to do whenever I'm starting out, there's one question that I ask myself, which is, if I'm going to activate a character, am I wanting to play something on that character before that happens? So for instance, in my hand, I have, sorry Zach, I'll just tell you, I have Poe Dameron's Blaster, right? It's a great, great card. Now, I have a couple of options. I could either play Poe Dameron's Blaster and then pass the turn over to Zach, or I could roll Ray in because I know that once I play this Blaster, I'm going to be out of resources and I'm going to eventually activate Ray anyway. So if the advantage of doing this, if I activate Ray and roll a resource, for instance, maybe now that opens up additional plays in my hand so that I can you know, play more cards or use events that I couldn't otherwise have used. So sometimes I like to look at, do I want to attach something first? Or if I'm not going to attach something to Ray this turn, maybe I'll just activate her and get another option for actions on the table. So I'm actually going to do that right now. Um, I'm going to take an action and activate a character, which is Ray. And that means I get to roll her die into the active pool. And looky there, it happened. So now I have potentially a resource I can resolve. That means that if I have a three cost card in my hand, now I might have the option to play it later in the turn. So I've given myself more information. And to go back to my decision making, something I want to note is to call out Ray's ability on her card. After you activate this character, if she has one or more shields, you may deal one damage to a character. Well, I would love to do that. Uh, let's do it to... Man, decisions, and this is just perfect. <laughs> uh, let's do it to Phasma. Which is a tough decision. Any, any thoughts going on there? Absolutely. So whenever your opponent, this is, a, you know, there's a number of things to consider. Whenever your opponent has signaled that they're going to already invest in one of these characters, so Kylo already has two resources invested. That means that if I get rid of Kylo, I'm going to get rid of everything that has been invested in Kylo up to that point. Um, so I see that Zach's building up Kylo. It's probably wise to start to do damage over here because I can get all of those threats off the board sooner. However, Captain Phasma only has 10 health as compared to Kylo's 12. So if I can, you know, turn down Phasma fast enough, then it would be worth it to go ahead and get that damage on there and try to get that character off the board quickly. So it was a little push and pull. And now you might be wondering, I played the cross guard on Kylo. I did one damage. I could have done a damage to Rey and okay. removed that shield. Um, but what I was actually looking for is I'm willing to take that damage because I actually wanted you to activate Ray uh, before putting an upgrade on her. Because if you want to build her, 
uh, you're gonna have to choose to do that first. And I get to activate Kylo, which is gonna give me the potential to do damage to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna activate Kylo, and when he activates, he also has a win activate an ability. So I roll in. Ooh. Ooh, money, money. And then I get to name a color. So this is the different colors of cards in the game, which is blue, red, yellow, and gray for neutral. And then I get to randomly pick a card in Steven's hand, and if I call it right, I get to do two damage to a character. Ooh. Are you gonna do that now? I am gonna do that now. What so, are you gonna call? Um, I'm gonna act like you I haven't seen Pose there. Blaster. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say blue, because I'm feeling lucky. I'm really good at pulling cards from Steven's hand. Very good. See the Netrunner series. Runner series. That's good. So I pulled Honor Guard is red. I missed, which means I don't get to activate his ability, and that'll be my action, so Steven's turn. All right, so action over to me. Well, I might go ahead and take... I'm going to pay one, and I'm going to play the Honor Guard. So it now opens up the support that comes back on my board. It has the support card type here, you can see, and it cost me one resource, given the top left of the card. And it has the bold action ability. And that means that now this action I can use whenever I could take an action during my turn. And that action is to discard it from play to remove a die showing damage. Uh, so I'm gonna do this and get this on the board ahead of time so that if Zach does something fancy and gets a bunch of damage, I can remove the honor guard and hopefully take some of that damage away. Absolutely. So it's there, and now it goes back over to you. All right, tough decision time. I am going to simply gain a resource with Kylo Ren. All right, gain a resource. So well, I'm choosing to resolve dice. I'm choosing to resolve resources. But I'm only going to resolve one of my dice showing resources, even though I could have resolved both of them. You could resolve both. So you can always resolve any number of dice showing the symbol that you're resolving. Uh, I'm going to choose to resolve dice. I'm going to choose resource. I only have one showing, and I'm going to resolve that to gain one resource. Okay. I am going to choose to play an upgrade on Phasma called Jedi Rival. It costs one. It doesn't come with a dice. Uh, but it says after you activate a attached character, you may remove one shield from a character. Oh, no, not Ray. <laughs> Coming at you. All right. I will pay two to play... Poe Dameron's Blaster. Say it ain't Poe. Say it ain't Poe. That card is so good. And it does appear to be very good. And all of the dice that correspond to these cards, we just keep off the table. And if you're at like an event where it matters and it's really important, uh, you know, you can hide them in a little case or something. Uh, but really, at a certain point, it just, it's fine. There they are. There they are. So you'll uh, find his Blaster. There it is. It's, right, boom. My action? Yep. So I'll go ahead and choose to activate Phasma. And after I activate that, well, we'll see how to roll first. So I activate her roll. I got a special symbol. Oof, nice. I'll choose her uh, to activate Jedi Rival. After I activate, I may remove a shield from a character, and I'll remove Ray's shield. All right. It's removed. It's essentially like doing one damage. So now you've got a special symbol. What does that deal two damage to a character or three damage if that character has six or more damage on it? So you can do more damage based on me being injured. Well, that's... Not something that I'm interested in. <laughs> uh, so I will choose from action to activate a character, and I'll activate Poe Dameron, and that's going to roll everything that is attached to that character. So Poe is coming in with his blaster. Yikes. And rolls two focus and one disrupt. So this disrupt symbol means I can get rid of one of Zach's resources. So if he were to choose, for instance, to use Kylo Ren's uh, die here and to get a resource, I could disrupt it and remove it or I could take two dice and change them to sides of my choosing. And it's up to two, so you don't actually, in this case, have to have two dice to do that with. And you also, important on the focus, you can't change your opponent's dice using a focus icon. That That's is a true. common question. Very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and resolve the cross guard lightsaber, get a resource, and see if you're willing oh, really? to spend your die. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it then. And to kind of go into the thinking on that, if that die can potentially do... Um, two damage. Two or three or three. special. Yeah, it's a three damage special. Yeah, so three damage special. Uh, if he's willing to remove that die from the pool, now uh, the most this could do is either one by itself or if I happen to roll the special two. Um, so the exchange for me is if he wants to smash it and with that, I'm, I'm more than happy. I don't want to smash it. I Not didn't, at I didn't all. figure. I smell uh, a reroll. I will take an action to discard a card from my hand. Not the medical droid. And I can re I know it's great. And I can reroll any number of dice uh, that are mine on the table. So I have two dice here, and I really want to reroll both. A two focus, if I were to resolve this, 
I'd only have one die that I could focus. So I feel like I'm just kind of wasting a lot of potential here. So let's go ahead and just pick these up and re-roll them. And you can re-roll any, ooh, there you go. You can re-roll any number of dice. So even if I had 16 dice on the table, I could discard one card and re-roll all 16 if I wanted to. So here's a beautiful little uh, combo here. We can talk about modified sides if, if Zach doesn't control me. You can do that in this me. Yeah. You'll get to. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose to resolve Phasma's die. The special allowing me to do two damage. I will go ahead and do two damage to Poe. Again, uh, you know, without any upgrades, I would probably want to get rid of Ray first because of her ongoing ability. Uh, but in this case, Poe's blaster is doing too much for me not to be concerned about it, so I'm gonna start piling damage up on Poe. All right, so you resolved a special, and the special is always tied to the character that is resolving, or the, the, the die, basically, whatever card is tied to that die. So it was Phasma's special, so we look at Phasma's card. It has a special symbol that then tells us how to resolve it. So we can deal two damage to a character, and that's what we did. So back over to me. Um, I feel like I'm going to resolve some dice. How does so, that work? So I'm gonna to choose to resolve range damage. Uh, so any amount of range damage on the table, I can resolve. Now, normally, if there's, you know, let's say there's a bunch of dice with range damage, I resolve them one at a time. So uh, let's just look at what that would look like. Let's say I have this here, and does this guy have a range damage? Anybody else? I have some over here. Yeah, give me, give me another range damage. So let's say this is showing, and I decide to resolve range dice. So I choose all the dice that I'm gonna resolve. So let's say I'm gonna resolve these. And then I could do two damage, two damage, four damage. So that's basically the, remember, even though you're resolving it all in one window, you're resolving it one die at a time. The only, the only kind of caveat to that is there's these plus modified sides. And you can always tag along any number of modified sides to a normal die that you're resolving. Uh, so for instance, right here, I'd be resolving four in a single instance. So it all has to go on the same character. So it all has to go on the same character. Um, so if I, let's say I resolve range dice here, I could do two damage to a thing, four damage to a thing, two damage to a thing. And that's basically how that would work. Now, if I have this showing, plus two, and I have nothing to pair it with, I can't resolve that die. Can't do anything. Can't do anything with that. So it's kind of a, it's just a little bonus, little tag along to other dice that you're resolving. Uh, and it adds a lot of oomph to that roll. So I'm gonna resolve four in a single moment, and it all has to go somewhere, uh, and I'm gonna put it all on Captain Phasma here. Okay. So there's four damage. These die go back to the cards because they've been resolved, and then that's my action for the turn. I'll pass it over to Zach. Okay, so as my action, um, I will choose to uh, claim the claim hangar the battlefield. So when you claim, you if I didn't already have the battlefield, it would come to my side of the table. Okay. I also get to trigger the claim ability, which is reveal the top card of an opponent's deck, if that card is an event or a support, deal one damage to a character. Top card of an opponent's deck. It is an upgrade, which is neither an event Ooh. or a support, and it's a really good one. Game's going my way. I yeah. don't mind it. All right, so now it's back over to me. Now here's the crazy thing. Zach has claimed the battlefield, which means that he can no longer take any actions. I'm out of the game. None We're actions. out of this round. So if I had additional cards in my hand to play, if I wanted to get more dice on the table, I could do all sorts of crazy things and I could take 20 actions in a row without Zach responding to me. So that is the kind of danger of claiming the battlefield. However, you'll notice that all my characters are exhausted. I have no resources. The support can't roll out or do anything. So it was very safe for you to claim the battlefield because it looks like I really just have nothing left to do. And you're absolutely right. So you claim the battlefield, I will now pass my turn, my action, and that means that we will move on to the next round. Go on to the upkeep phase. Okay, so during the upkeep phase, you can discard any number of cards from your hand, and then you're gonna be drawing back up to five. Uh, we're also going to be gaining two resources and readying all of our characters and cards. That's right. So everything readies, then we gain resources. I'm gonna discard a card. Also, any dice that were out, like for instance, if uh, this plus two was out and I didn't get to resolve it during the upkeep phase, it will come back to my card. You're basically cleaning up the board. And actually, I know the order, or at least it's printed out over there and I can just barely see it. So read to me the order of the upkeep phase. So the actual technical order is you ready all your cards. Okay, you ready. You return all your dice to your cards. Done. You gain two resources. Done. Then you discard any number of cards from your hand and draw up until you have 
Cards equal to the, your max hand size. Okay, which so is I fine. could discard and then draw up. If there were cards in here that I did not want, I'm going to keep these two. Uh, and then did you do the same? I did the same. And now, very important to note, you keep any resources that you did not spend. Yeah, and kind of a check in even before I gain the resources and before you gain yours, just seeing how that first turn went, right? Like, this is something I like to do, which is Steven did five damage, I did two, plus you had the two shields, so I technically did four. And I have three cost worth of cards in play. He has three cost worth of cards in play, but I was left with one resource. Yeah. So you can kind of see the exchange. Steven did a little bit more damage, and because he had the shields, also has a little more damage on the board. Absolutely. I we ended the same with the same number of cards in play, and kind of are both building our boards in certain ways. And I have a resource. There you go. Now we'll gain so two. You've got a little bit more money to spend this next round. Draw back up to five. Ooh, Zach. Here we go. All right, so then we'll go to the second turn, and we're just going to keep playing, and you determine who goes first on the second turn by, who, again, whoever controls the battlefield. So I will get to go first. And as my first action... You need a teacher? Ah, you need a teacher. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play Mobilize. Cost three resources. Oh, no. And it says... Gain four resources. Oh, I just said that's easy. So I just basically net one resource. But well, you have to have three Empire to play there. it. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Okay, well that gives me a little bit of tempo. So you don't have dice on the board. I can maybe get some things moving here. I... Oof. I'm going to play Inner Strength on Poe. Kind of breaking my own rules here. I do kind of want to activate Ray, but I also want to get this on, and then I want to get Poe activated and threatening you. And Inner Strength is one of those, it's such a good card, um, especially in a more limited format like this, where you can just every turn potentially be moving damage over to me. So we'll see if I can get around that. Uh, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play Imperial Envoy. It costs two, and it says reveal two random cards in an opponent's hand, then deal one damage to a character for each event or support that you just revealed. All right, hold on. Let me see how this is going to go. And part, part of why I'm doing this <laughs> is I, I, I want to use Kylo's ability, and this knowledge of the two cards in his hand is going to give me something to work with. Like if I pull two red cards, I know I have at least a 50% chance of calling red. All right, so, all right, so reveal a random card. <sighs> Like seeing that. It's not a supporter an event. All right, so that we have is an event. Uh, an event. So I get to do one damage. I'll do it to Poe, and I now know that there's a blue and a gray card, uh, which makes me not want to call red. But if those two are red, that's at my highest odd odd play. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be wild? Be hard to imagine. All okay, right. so that was you. You played a card for your yep. action. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna just go for it here. Uh, my action. See, I guess it is possible. I guess this is possible. To get money? Yeah. My action is to activate Poe. So whenever I activate, I pull any dice on attached cards and roll. And there we have a Disrupt, a Blink, and two Blaster. And that is going to be my activation. I look and if I had anything that said after attached character activates, uh, I could do that now, but I don't have that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate Kylo. I roll in, and I get a name a color to see if I can guess it correctly and do some damage here. Oh boy, I All am right, Kyla, going good to luck. Uh, name blue. Wow. Gray. I missed again. Excellent. It's not looking great for the old, the old first order. Kylo Mind Link, no good. Used all my luck juice in the Netrunner videos. All right, let's do. What? Let's let's uh, let's get Ray in there. And I'm just going to build this dice pool out so that whenever I do, for instance, re-roll, if I want to spend a card to re-roll dice, the more dice I have on the table, the more you know efficient that's going to be. So now I've got all my dice on the table. I'm, my options are all out there. I can start really planning my turn around what I want to do. Okay. Over to you, Zach. All right. I, I could have resolved that disrupt and taken a resource, but you're I'm going to go ahead and roll Captain Phasma in, just in case you have some way of doing damage Ooh. to her in the near future. So that's two damage. Two showing. Got that honor guard sitting there. I like it. I just like kind of showing it. I think that's fine. I think that's fun, fun to do. 
Um, let's do it. I'm going to take an action, okay. and Printed I can always action. use any action that's on the board. And the honor guard says, discard this support to remove a die showing damage. So I'm going to discard this to remove this die because it is showing damage. Phasma away. Done. Uh, so over to you. That was All my right. action. Uh, so as my action, this is going to get tougher than I want it to. So you've used the honor guard, which is good. Yeah. You're, um, you're wide open. I'm going to spend a resource for I Have You Now. It's an oh, event. No. I'm going to pay one, turn a die to a side showing damage. So I'm going to take this Kylo die and turn it to the two damage side. Okay. I see. <laughs> I see how this is going to go. Well, Zach, I'm going to sound the alarm. <laughs> that card. All right, zero cost. Reroll any number yeah. of an opponent's dice showing damage. I'm right. going to reroll both of those. I assume. Now, it could be better. Technically, you could get four damage here. That's right. I think you're going to get double blanks. I love that. Double money. I really. <laughs> absolutely love it. <laughs> sure you do. All right, so now it's my action. I'm going to go ahead and discard a card to reroll both dice again. Okay. Because I don't want money, I want damage. All right. All right, that's good for me. Now you'll notice Zach rolled the plus two, but he can't do anything with it because he doesn't have any standard black damage to pair it with. All right. Uh, I'm going to discard this flank. To I should have called neutral. My odds were so good. All right, and there's that. I don't and like it. Technically, it's a good idea to keep your dice in the appropriate section. So these are all posed and these are all raised. And that's particularly important when you have Characters that are the same, like two non-unique characters, like a battle droid, or upgrades that are the same. So if you had an inner strength on Rey, there's actually one die that's on her and one die that's on Poe for various reasons. All right, so another action that we haven't really talked so much about is that you can decide not to take an action and pass. That's true. So I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to pass. All right, so now I, the choice is over to me. If I choose to pass as well, then we will move on to the next round. It's essentially like the turn is over. Um, but I'm looking at all these dice I have on the board. I don't really want the turn to end right now. I feel like I'm in a good spot. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to resolve dice. I'm going to choose the special symbol. Okay. And I will resolve inner strength is the only special symbol that I have. And it says move one damage from attached character to an opponent's character with no shields. So move is a very powerful ability in this game. So Poe now goes to two damage because one is going to move over to Phasma. And it's important to note that that would also go beneath shields. It sure would. So even if I had three shields on, and if she had one health left, that ability would just defeat her. Beautiful. Okay, I am going to pass again. Really? Hmm. I, you're not gonna not resolve your two That's damage. That's true. Now if I pass, Zach would maintain control of the battlefield, would go first next round, and we'd reset the board. Uh, instead, I'm going to play a do or do not. <laughs> gonna. Ooh. Reroll one of my dice and resolve it, increasing its value by one. Otherwise, remove it. And I'm going to reroll Ray here. It could be painful. Come on, Ray, do or do not. Oh, oh I'm going to get schooled. Maybe. Taking me to task do here. Do or do not. So, uh, two damage, it immediately resolves. As per the card text, reroll one of your dice. I may resolve it, increasing its value by one. Otherwise, remove it. So this is going to be two plus one is three, so it immediately resolves per the card text, and we'll do three over there to Phasma. Oh boy. One away from, from total death. All right, so I'm going to play a card called Clash, and it's got two yeah, things going on. Go. <laughs> uh, the first one says, turn one of your dice to a side showing melee damage, so I will do that. And then turn an opponent's dice showing melee damage to a blank. Now, that can't happen, and that's fine. You can do the first part of this without doing the second. So. I'll do that, and it'll go away. If you hadn't had do or do not, I was waiting for you to roll with Ray, and then I could have turned it to a blank. Absolutely. Now, important to know, some of these cards, it's, it's, you have to read them effectively. right? So that one is two separate sentences. Do a thing, do a thing. So that's fine. Now, if there's a card that says, if you do X, then you can do Y, and you can't do X, then obviously you can't you do can't Y. can't do Y, yeah. Um, or if it says, you know, turn a die to a side in order to turn this thing to a side, there are various things that uh, we'll get into later when the rules get a little more advanced. But for now, it's pretty self-explanatory. And I have an action. Oh no. See, this is the thing, you know, you, do you wanna, do you wanna waste one damage by doing two to Phasma, when I could technically do two full damage to Kylo? Um, 
I'm on the, uh, I'm curious if you're gonna re-roll the pose blaster or not. It's quite, it's a curious thing. You have no cards left, right? No cards left. So if you, if you roll a two, obviously you can do two and two or four. If you roll the plus two, you can resolve it because you already have the post sitting there. And if you roll the special, you're even in a better spot in doing the damage. And you know there's nothing I can do about your die because I'm out of cards and resources. Now another option that I have is oh, yeah. two to Kylo, you do four to me, I claim the battlefield, hope to hit the one damage and kill Phasma. But you really don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss. Cause, but I really like to take chances, Zach. Well, you're, you're, I would say in the scale of this game, right, you're ahead currently on damage, so... if so you keep taking chances. If you take the chance, you could get really far ahead, <laughs> but if not, then you're probably just going to consistently stay ahead. I'm gonna discard Ray's Lightsaber to re-roll any number of dice. And that's the hard part, because knowing what that card is, yeah. is difficult to toss that away, because you could just roll a blank, or a resource. I'll take, I'll take some money, Which is, yeah, it's, good. it's fine. So now I'm going to do four damage to Poe. Okay, so you resolve dice. I'm gonna resolve melee. You resolve one melee, and you tag along any number of modified sides. Yep. So all four are gonna go right there. I guess I'll do one, and then two, three, four. So poet six. I really want it. I'm gonna do two to phasma. Yeah, I think getting here off the board is correct, and I think that's that's so phasma is defeated. So defeated means she goes off the board. I'm gonna turn her upside down. All her upgrades go away and she's removed from the game. And that is a pretty good case of what you were saying earlier, which is if you'd gone after Kylo, um, he would have 11 damage right now. Yeah, And so he true. wouldn't be defeated. I would have him again potentially for the next turn, and it's a totally different game. So you did your action, my action, I'm gonna claim the battlefield again, reveal the top card, and hope for some luck to start hitting my way. It's an event. So we'll do one damage to Poe. All right, Taking all him right. to seven, and if I uh, can get lucky and call the right color next turn, I'm feeling medium okay about this. So you're checked out of the turn, you've claimed the battlefield, I'm gonna take an action to gain a resource. And then I don't have any cards, I don't have anything left to activate, so there's really nothing left for me to do. Uh, so I will pass the turn and we will go to the upkeep phase, where, hit me with the order. Ready your cards. All right, let's ready the cards. Return all dice to your cards. Okay, Already Gain done. two resources. Done. Discard any number of cards from your hand, we're both out, and then we drop her max hand size, which is currently five. Five cards. My deck's getting a little Four, thin over here. Five. Oh man, look at this card. Oh man. Yep. Cool. I love it. All right, so you have the battlefield, which means you will take the first action. You've got two resources, I've got three. This would have been so good. And now Poe is on the clock, basically. I'm looking to try to utilize Poe before you can potentially get him off the board. And if you can uh, you know, trigger that inner strength, you can potentially save him, if I, depending on how much damage I can do. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play Praetorian Guard on Kylo. So I pay two, and this is an upgrade. Uh, he gets the Guardian keyword. I'm glad we get to explain that. Yep, so we'll probably get there in a second. Excellent. So I could, I could do some things, but the first thing that I really want to do is get Poe's dice on the board just in case Zach has some crazy tricks that could do four damage at once. I don't want to be sitting there without getting to use him. Oh, Ooh. yeah. And we got the old brick house there. All right, so my turn. Yes. Uh, we're going to explain a couple things here. Uh, unfortunately, not showing any damage. And so this is one of those times, uh, he has the guardian keyword. And the way that works is when he activates, I can choose a die on my, of my opponent showing damage, remove it, deal that much damage to my character. And in the case earlier where he had the two damage with Poe with the plus two, I could guardian away the two, and now you can't actually even use the plus two. Or if Phasma is still alive, again, I could take the damage on Kylo and potentially save Phasma from her untimely fate. So when you activate guardian would trigger, you could take this two damage, and that would leave me with a plus two that I couldn't do anything with. Because That's right. I can only tag things along whenever I'm resolving those dice. And it's important to note that is not resolving the damage. That's removing the die and doing damage equal to the value. So I could also remove a modified side mm -hmm. uh, because it's a side showing damage. Um, and that's just a little, little distinction that can also be confusing. Nuggets so, of strategy. First thing I'm gonna do is play as I have foreseen. It's a zero cost event. What have you foreseen? It has ambush, what? which we haven't encountered yet. Uh, ambush is an ability that says when you may take an additional action after you play this card. So I play the card and I still have an action left. And it says, look at each opponent's hand. Okay. Here, let's look at it together. Woo, strike team. Strike team's cool. 
distraction, logistics, recon, and defensive stance. All right, so I played as I have foreseen for one particular reason, which is I'm gonna arrange these cards. Three of his five cards are red, two are blue, meaning that Kylo's ability, if I call red, is three out of five to actually hit. But I also get hidden information now, so I know he can gain two shields. That's a really good for you right now. Uh, you can choose two dice. And you remove one. Yikes. <laughs> I can match a die to anything that's showing currently. You can gain an extra resource when you trigger that, and of course the strike team. Two more resources, if you get logi if you if you'd roll the resource logistics up to a strike team, could be powerful. Wouldn't that have been something? Yep. So I need to deal with him Costa Pronto. Him. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and activate Kylo. I'm going to name Red. If it was the call, yeah, I, I think, think that was the big call, yeah. <laughs> okay, you got the special symbol there. What special is deal two damage to a character or three instead if that character has one or more shields. Okay. Shields I don't have. But, you but have I do have defensive hands, stance, yeah. so I don't want to use that, do I? And more money, way to go. Kylo in the mines, okay, let's... Oh, you get to pick one. Go on, Red. Your net runner skills hopefully are... Yes, I right. hit. All right, so I'll do two more damage to Poe, taking him to You get to do eight. two damage with that? If I get it right, I know, what? he's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> if your opponent, especially, so if you're only running one color of characters, uh, that's t typically referred to as running mono, a, a single color. Uh, so when you're playing against an opponent who is, then the only two possibilities are gray for neutral and the color in their deck, which makes Kylo very, very powerful. Weird. Okay, so let's think about this. So you need to do two damage. I could potentially give myself two shields, and then you would do three damage here. But Poe would stay alive. But Poe would stay alive, yes. Or I could try to, you know, mess with that die, do something weird with it. But you've always got re-rolls, and I feel like you're going to want to re-roll these anyway. So I'm going to do the move that I know is okay. I'm going to go ahead and play defensive stance. Mm -hmm. Pay one. That's going to put two shields on Poe. Staying alive. And I'm just trying to stay alive here. That's my goal. Okay. And before you have a chance to do something to it, I guess I saw your hand. So you can turn a die to a side showing a symbol. You can gain a resource with logistics, you can play strike team, and you can make me remove one of two dice. I so sure can. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, resolve a die before you make me remove a die, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna resolve here, and you know, actually. <laughs> Ooh, there's so much strategy to this There game. is so much, it's, it's, so it's so choose good. two dice, right? Yeah, choose two. So I actually, knowing that, have a better plan. But now I have a better plan. I'm going to resolve for two resources. Oh. Well, look at that. Money. So do you have something in your hand that does a damage or something? That'd be tricky. This is... So I know your hand, right? I know you can't remove this die right yeah. now because I only have one die showing. And that's one of those examples earlier where you said you can't do if unless you can do the then. And so you can't choose two dice. So it prevents you from playing that card. Uh, and it gives me resources to do other things that at least scare you, if nothing else. Okay, well, I have a question, and I actually don't know the answer, so I'm just going to play it out. Hopefully I do. Uh, let's pay one for recon. Okay. So it says, choose a symbol showing on a die. Now, is a blank a symbol? A blank is a symbol. Well, then I'm going to choose blank, then turn another die to a side showing the same symbol. I'm going to turn that to a side showing blank. Yeah, and it doesn't specify whether it has to be yours or your opponent's, so. You're blanked out. That passes the test. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose to discard a card to reroll my lone blank here. Hope you don't hit that special. See again. if we can have a special kind of evening here. And got a shield. All right, we got a shield, all right, that's good, that's fine. Didn't see that recon coming, did you? I should have. You, you saw it, you literally saw it. I did a recon on you. <laughs> and got hosed. I see that card. Yeah, that's how you know you've made a good play as your opponent looks at the card. I'm gonna take an action to activate Ray. Ooh, one shield. Staying alive. Staying alive. I'm about to get a big old Ray roll too. Action is over to Zach. Yeah, I'm thinking. You better do something. I, I know. <laughs> it's good for me to, to really 
try to hose you in some of these videos. You, you've been doing well in the record. You've been caning me. Uh, or vice versa. L L5R, you, did you win every game in L5R? I think so. <laughs> and then we split Netrunner. I yeah. think you won the it's, tutorial It's time game, for the though. tide to turn. So now maybe I can get a few. This is tough. In the victory column. Because I want to, let's just do it. I'm going to reroll. I, I really wanted to save that doubt to play on oh, you. Yeah, doubt's a great card. I kind of need. Oh, That's perfect. It's it's just worst. nothing. Okay, so now I will go ahead and discard a card to reroll any number of dice. That's the action that I'm taking. Um, it's tempting to leave this because I know that it guarantees me a symbol that I want. Uh, but, but if you roll that special, that is so I good do, for you. I do want the special. Um, and then these blanks are obviously going to get rerolled. I can have a shield on Ray, but I don't mind getting the resource or the discard to, although I think you're going to use that card to reroll. <laughs> uh, so I have basically three sides that are just as good. So I think I may as well take a 50-50 shot at it. Here we go. Just as good or better. All right. Shike. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. All right, mine. Uh, I'm going to play First Strike, cost two, deal damage to a character equal to the value of an opponent's die showing damage. Ooh, so nice. I will do two damage to Poe using uh, the two showing on Ray. So you had a potential to kill Poe after resolving sure that special. I sure did. Wow. I sure did. That would have been a real bummer. <clears throat> it would have been very good for you, you know? I was there. Uh, let's do... You're out of cards. You're out, you got nothing. I've You've got, got no... I've got nothing. No good options. Yeah. You can do at max one damage to Poe, so he stays alive. Um, yeah, through the battlefield. So I almost I think that I'm going to end up re-rolling. Uh, but let's start by doing two damage to Kylo Ren. So I'm going to choose a resolve dice. I'm going to choose melee damage. I only have one melee damage showing. I'll resolve it to do two damage. Okay. Um, so I could claim and potentially do one damage. I don't think you would claim if I passed, though. And I also don't think you would pass. So the benefit of me not claiming here, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pass, is that in the event that you roll the special on Inner Strength, when I trigger this, I would actually want to do the one damage to Poe. If you don't roll Inner Strength, I might want to do the one damage to Ray because when I activate Poe next turn, if I get the correct call, I will do two damage to anyway. Kylo. Okay, I see. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to pass. You're going to pass. And now Steven knows my plan. Your great, great plan. Um, now I could logistics this to gain two resources. Yep. But honestly, I mean, two shields is better for me. I think that both of those specials are better. So I've got a 50 50 shot of getting better on this die. In fact, even the focus is better. Yeah. So, like, the only way it gets worse is rolling a blank one and six that it goes worse. It's true. Poe, I'll probably keep on the one just in case I roll a plus two here. And this thing has been disrupting a lot. I think it's weighted. Uh, let's discard a card to reroll. And I can choose any number of dice to reroll. I'm going to choose these two. Okay. So let's go ahead and roll those in. Oof. Speak of the devil. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So back over to you, Zach. Um, I'm still in a position where I'm going to pass. All right. Well, I'm going to try it one more time. I'm going to discard this logistics yep. to roll those two dice. And sometimes you just try. You know, it's a game of managing. Oh, there it is. That's exactly what I needed. I mean, it's... That's what it's, I was talking about, it's though. It's <laughs> unbelievably like a, mm, good. <laughs> mm, fate calls to me. It is your destiny. Fulfill your destiny. How many um, times have we said it is your destiny while playing Star Wars Destiny? Or fulfill your destiny yeah. or, yeah, yeah, it is your the destiny. The jokes just write themselves. Yeah, they game. really do. So <laughs> I will continue passing for now. Pass. All right, let's remove one from Poe and do one. It's a really good economic exchange <laughs> for you. It's a pretty good exchange. That, seeing you play that on turn one is just like, or turn two is a stab in the heart. I'll go ahead and claim and hope for an event or a support on the top of the deck. Got it's it. An event. So I'll do one damage back to Poe, which is really important again because it gives the Kylo ability the potential to take him off the board before he can really do anything. Well, on my way uh, to potentially the graveyard, let's do three. Choose to resolve dice. So I will resolve this die and I can add any number of modifiers. I will go ahead and modify it with this one. So that's three damage total. Straight shot. Taking to him to deck. six. This is getting rough. Now, the, the cool thing here, before we even continue, right? You are definitely ahead. I've only got six health left. But if I can tr trigger his ability to remove Poe, you I'm have gonna, a, nothing Ray over You here. have a one die Ray against my three die Kylo. So I can, with his ability and my number of dice, I can catch up in this race. It could, um, it could work. So we'll see what happens. I don't have any more actions. Um, again, I could do anything because Zach has checked out of the round, but I'm gonna choose to pass, so we'll move on to the upkeep phase. Okay. So we're ready all of our characters. We return our dice, and this is a good example of that happening. We gain two resources, and we draw back up to our maximum hand size. All right. 
One, two, three, four, five. Now, important to note. I got two cards left. I've only got two cards left in my deck. Zach has two cards left. So we're getting close to you know losing the game based on being out of cards. Now, in these kinds of situations, sometimes it is beneficial, especially if you're behind on the damage curve. So maybe Zach's, you know, doesn't hit his Kylo ability. Poe lives. He might change his strategy to try to outlast me by getting rid of my cards, keeping Kylo alive, and then he would win by my deck being gone rather than de defeating my characters. And even now, discarding cards to reroll is going to get questionable uh, if we're not in a position to, to just win. So I get first action, I have the battlefield. I'm gonna start by activating Kylo and praying for rain uh, and getting the right color here and knocking Poe off the board. I like these odds. Well, there's two damage, right? So that's... I'm showing lethal, yep, unless you can remove chance. it. And now you're using Kylo's ability, right? So after you activate the character, you choose a color, and then if you get it right, you deal two damage. Now, if, if I were a gambling man, and I were taking this just far too seriously, I would organize the cards in your discard pile right now, and I would see <laughs> what the breakdown is. And if I were really good, I would then recall how many of each card... I don't, I don't need to see that much. Let's just look at uh, it. How many of each card in the deck there is, um, to kind of look at the odds. It looks like there's more red in the discard than blue. Five red, four blue, and two gray. And I, th I think that's about the split of the deck, which is like five, five, two. So just based on that knowledge, we also have a red and a blue card showing here, right? Um, I think the call is probably blue. Um, so I'm gonna, I haven't seen Luke's protection. I haven't seen, who knows what I haven't seen over there. I feel like you played a decent amount of Destiny. But then, you know, I'm looking over here, look at this dice spread here. There's four red dice. <laughs> that's why you want to hide your dice, right? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Well, I've seen the medical and the strike team now. Oh, those are, that's my die. <laughs> well, that helps. That I see now. Up. I right. see. So you're calling, you say blue? I'm gonna call blue. All right, I'm gonna lay it out like in a very dramatic but, way. I actually think that this is like, if I'm gonna have a chance in the game, I either need to hit this or you not be able to remove that. I think you've got a good chance if you hit this, actually. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm feeling pretty okay if I so hit you wanna, this. So you wanna grab a blue card just to be not sure. Just to be clear. So I'm gonna peek here. <laughs> what is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's red. There's two blues Lord. in there, by the way. Ah, oh, it hurts so my soul. Three reds and two blues. Well, that's very good for me. Sorry, right, I'll still get you. Happy about that. Okay, so I'm still spooked um, because I know that there's no way for me to get Poe on the table and resolve some dice before this two damage comes into play. So is there a way for me to get this off the board or to otherwise remove it? And I'm gonna look. <laughs> I'm gonna look at my cards real, real closely here. No, 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 no. A lot of no's, I gotta tell ya. So that means that I need to come up with a plan, a different plan. Zach, before we do this, are you going to be replacing an upgrade anytime soon? Because I really wanna show that in the game. Um, I'm not, but I can before we're done here. Okay, let's, let's just plan on that. Um, so I don't wanna do anything like next with, turn. Yeah, I don't wanna do anything with Poe because I know that that's kind of wasted time. So let's move over to Ray and see what we might do there. That makes me happy to hear that. Yeah. Mister. You need a teacher, man. You need a teacher. Um, I think I'll do this. It's kind of my only option right now. No, it's not my only option. Yeah, it is. Let's pay two for teamwork. Makes the dream work. I can give attached character one shield and give another character one shield if I roll the special. So not ideal when you only have one character left. Teamwork doesn't work very well when it's only Ray on the board, but it's an additional die that can give me some plus sides and create some more damage. That's right, so now you've given me an opportunity here to defeat Poe and I- Take it, always. I, if you've learned anything from watching Star Wars, <laughs> it's that if you have a chance to defeat your opponent, you do Always it. Always take it. So I'm going to do two damage to Poe and defeat him. All right, so look at this. All of this, four resources invested. We Discarded. got ourselves a game. Poe off the board. And now we have a classic Ray versus wounded Kylo. You can't write this stuff any better. I feel like we're in a movie already. 
All right, Ray with teamwork, but for who? <laughs> it is. This is like the end of the Force Awakens here. Beautiful. Spoiler alert: uh, <laughs> Injured Kylo versus a Ray. Kylo's here we got go. his lightsaber. Ray needs a teacher. I'm going to choose to activate for my action, and Ray will roll in with the corresponding dice. Boom. One resource, one melee damage. Now Zach has two resources. He could have any number of cards in hand that could remove my dice. So I've got to just, you know, hope that he doesn't. And that's why I love Destiny so very much. Most of the time, there are threats, Too and money. then you're able to respond to threats. So I'm going to resolve four... my, my resource signs. Okay, so what does that mean? I don't know what cards he has, but four resources is ridiculous. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. There's been an awakening. <laughs> I'll just take the money. I want the money. Boom. I take the money. I'm going to play my droid commandos. Mm. These guys are boss. Oh, yeah? Yep. Sure do. Let's pay two for direct hit. Uh. Resolve one of my <laughs> dice showing damage, ranged or melee, increase its value by two. So let's do three. All Kyla, just a direct well, hit. I should have removed in, that one. You call in the droid commandos, and I go for the, the coup de gras here. Yeah, and if you hit this, it's going to be a nightmare. I'm going to go ahead and activate the droid commandos and see if I can't get Ray that three here. here. Or two discard. I'd take a two discard. Or, or you know, a bl blank city. <laughs> Welcome to the capital. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll pay zero. For Luke's protection. I hear that's a good card. It, it introduces an action that gives place it on top of my deck to give a blue character one shield. Very handy. It makes it hard to, game. to you know deck him. I'm gonna re-roll here. All right. Two damage. damage. Um, I'll take an action for Luke's protection, place it on top of my deck to give a blue character one shield. Okay. Now I'm gonna do something weird. Uh oh. Which is I know what's on top of your deck. It's Luke's protection. Lebowski knows what's on top of your deck. <laughs> uh, I can trigger here and do one damage. But you have two on the table. And claim the battlefield. But if I, if I let you claim, not only might I take a damage, Ray has a shield. So when you activate, you'll do a damage. So that's me taking two. That's true. If, and you get to go first and put me in a world of, world of hurt. So You're entering a world of pain. In, in a world of pain. So instead, I'm going to claim. Okay. Reveal the top card of your deck. It's going to uh, show support. That's so smart. So I'll do one to Ray. Which Taken. takes the shield and it prevents me from taking one here and one here. A three damage play versus a two damage play and you having the battlefield. All right, so now it comes back to me. I can take any number of actions in succession as I like because you are checked out and you called it well. I have nothing left to do. So I will pass and we will move on to the next round. We got okay. the upkeep phase. So we ready, ready card. our cards. We return our dice even here still. We can discard a number of cards that we want, which I assume will be very close to zero for both of us given the size of our deck. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and then we gain two resources, and we draw back up to five. Three, four, five. And then we start the turn. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, man. So, this is insane, actually. It's actually really good. Uh, so I'm going to do something we haven't seen yet, uh, which is I'm going to replace an upgrade that's on one of my characters. And so the way this works is I can play an upgrade on a character, Remove an upgrade that's already there and reduce the cost of the new upgrade by the cost of the old one. So okay. this Praetorian Guard cost me two. Guardian's not really doing too much for me right now. Uh, I'll remove it from the game. I'll spend the difference, which is one resource. And now Captain Phasma, Phasma's Blaster gets to come into play. So this is a way Kylo. that you can start with cheaper upgrades on your characters. And then as the game goes along, you can play more expensive upgrades and get a discount on them by removing the cheap upgrade and subtracting the cost from the new upgrade. You can only do that once per turn. Once per which round. Which is really important. Uh, yeah, once per round. So, uh, so you're built up there. Um, now, Zach, you'll notice we both don't have any cards in our deck. What does that ultimately mean for us at this point in the game? So one of the win conditions is obviously defeating all of your opponent's characters. The other one is if your opponent at the end of a turn doesn't have any cards in their hand or deck, so uh, no cards in yep. hand or deck, so yep. they're done. All right, so do you have any discard side showing over there? Uh, there's a two discard here. Ooh. So if you end up with two cards in your hand, and I roll that side, I can get rid of them. If you don't defeat me, then I, that I can be a win, win condition. So the first thing I want to do is activate Ray. And now re-rolls re get really tough now because I'm literally ticking down the death clock for me. Boy, that's about 
exactly what I could possibly need. All right. So now Zach has to, he has to remove this. Or this, this is just Game City. I mean, this is over. All right, so I will play a card uh -huh, <laughs> called the Go to the Bathroom. No, just kidding. Uh, the card I'll play is called Your Skills Are Complete. It's zero cost, turn upgrade die to a side showing a blank. So I'll choose the teamwork and it will get to blank. Which is important for a lot of reasons. <laughs> for a lot of reasons. So now he's, to get that two again, which is he really needs to, wants to show lethal here, he's gonna have to, it's a one in six chance to get that. Unless I concentrate. So I'm gonna pay one, turn one of my dice to any side. Then I may spend a resource to turn another die to any side, and I'm not gonna do that. So you just concentrate sometimes, and things work out. So uh, I don't have any way to deal with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate Kylo. I'm gonna name blue, try to see if I can just score some damage here uh, with his ability. Which I do, so two damage to Ray. You did it, two damage. And now it's really cool to imagine what happened here. Um, so you had the, uh, what was that called? Your skills are complete, mm -hmm. blanked one of my dice, but then I concentrated to bring it back to lethal. Uh, and now Kylo's activating at the last second, but Ray is gonna be able to resolve dice. I'm gonna choose melee symbol, and I'm going to tag along a plus two with it. And that's gonna be three damage, which will defeat Kylo. And that means that the game is over. Starting characters have been defeated. The end. So even though you gotta support your droid commando army over here, doesn't matter because Kylo is in the snow, as it were. So there it is. A quick game of Star Wars Destiny using the two-player game. That's a super easy purchase to start things out. You can have the exact same experience we have just had here, which I would highly recommend because that was an absolute blast. Anything that we need to cover here uh, for the basics to make sense? I think that's all the fundamentals. We'll be getting into all the advanced deck building, taking in more starters, more cards, and you'll kind of get to see more of the game as we go and learn you know, how to navigate collecting and all that kind of stuff. So really just stay tuned. All right, thank you guys. Keep watching. Again, we have this entire series on our website in a much easier to digest format, including blogs and all of these videos. So check it out there. The link is in the description. We will see you on the next video. Catch you there. Thanks for watching. You can find the next video in the Learning Destiny series on our channel. You can also find the link to our Learning Destiny series over on the website, which is where we have blogs, deck lists, and everything else, as well as all these videos. And it is truly the best way to watch and view all of this content. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep playing.